Hey guys, it's Steve Frain. In this video, we're going to talk about so-called point-in-time recovery. That's a handy thing you can do with Oracle XC. As opposed to hot and cold backup and recovery, which we've covered in previous videos, where the goal is to basically restore your database to the last known good point that you have, you know, the, the most recent uh, good copy of the data, of the state of the database that you can manage. The goal of a point-in-time recovery is to say, okay, I'm going to restore to some particular point in the history of the database that is not necessarily the latest one that I have. A common scenario would be something like a user who has high-level privileges, let's say that our security has been a bit sloppy and we gave them DBA access, maybe it's the developer, whoever it is, connects to the production system and accidentally deletes a number of tables that uh, are essential to the production system. Maybe they mistakenly thought they were working on a development system, whatever. Whatever the case may be, Let's just say that 9.15 in a particular Wednesday morning, this person goes in and they blow away a series of production tables. I've actually been the guy who does that and it's not a lot of fun. Point in time recovery would be a handy tool because it would allow us to say, okay, we had a big screw up at 9.15 on Wednesday. I want to make the database look exactly as it did at, let's say, 9.12 or 9.10. I'm going to recover the database to a particular either system clock time, like I could use a timestamp to do it, or a so-called system change number. A system change number, as you recall, is basically a counter that ticks off when we make some kind of significant change to the database. Whenever we make a change to the database, let's say we create a new table, we add some data to a table and commit it, whatever the case may be, the, in the transaction logs of the database, we kind of tick off a counter that says, hey, a new change was made to the database, let's increment the so-called system change number, we'll roll it forward one, and the system change number is used, among other things, to synchronize the headers of the data files in the database. So the database wants to check and see that the latest system change number that's been recorded is also stamped in the headers of the various data files of the database. That way, if, if the database goes down and experiences some kind of failure, when we try to bring it back up, Oracle does a little consistency check and says, I know that the system made it to system change number 1011, or whatever the case may be, do all of my data files have 1011 stamped in the header? If they do, I know I'm in good shape. If not, I know something's wonky and I have to go through some recovery and restore processes to kind of get things the way they need to be. So in any event, point in time is I want to recover to as the database was at a particular point in time. We either specify by time or this so-called system change number, but most of the time you're probably not going to know what the system change number was. There are certainly ways to dig in and get that kind of information if you're really trying to isolate to a particular change we're not going to cover those uh, as part of the course here because they become a little bit more advanced, but we're going to do some basic things related to system clock time generally and say, hey, we want to make the database look as it looked at a particular moment in history. Important thing to note about uh, point in time recovery is changes after the point in time to which you recover will be lost. We're basically giving the database a fresh start at a certain point in time, and it's going to kind of, I guess, set a baseline there and then move forward. And anything from the previous timeline is going to, that's after the point in time to which you recovered is going to basically get lost. It'll still be floating around there in the transaction logs, but from the state of the database perspective, those changes have kind of gone off into the ether there. Okay. One of the important things to do for point in time recovery is make sure you are running in archive log mode. We've covered that a couple times, but I'm going to now connect to my database. I will connect system sysdba and I'm connected. And I'm going to do archive log list. It's one way to do it. I can also do select log underscore mode from vdollar database. Cool. And uh, I have the database. It's I just did another backup and recovery exercise recently before I opened this database again. So it happens to be at log sequence one, but more important, you can see up here that archive mode is on, it's enabled, so we're in a, a good state to be able to use uh, the point in time recovery processes. I wanna show you another tool before we get too far. This is something we wanna to get to from an operating system prompt. So I'm pulling up command prompt here. I'm gonna type a command called rman. Uh, well, I'll finish it out and I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute. rman target system. Okay. Alright, so it's asking me for a database password. 
and I'm putting in here the DBA password I, I use for the system user. So the rman command is the name of an Oracle backup and recovery utility. When you run the options from the Oracle menu, Oracle database express addition here, and when I do things like restore database, backup database, etc. If you guys remember from previous videos, you see a script running, and those are actually rman commands that are being executed on the basis of this stuff. So here I've kind of gone into the rman tool directly without any, any fancy scripts in place, and I'm going to be able to instruct it directly. I'm going to give it a command called list incarnation. Okay. What it's showing me here, and you see that there are four records that come back, these are basically different quote unquote incarnations of the database. An incarnation is bounded by either like the very start of the database being used, I guess this particular one you can see things go back to, that seems a little early, February of 2006, but I installed this particular instance of the database a couple months ago, so who knows. Um, but you can see that on in June, July, and a little bit later in July, I have these reset times and reset SCNs. These are basically uh, recovery operations I performed that kind of took the current state of the database and said, okay, we had some stuff go on before, but because of this backup and recovery operation, I'm more or less starting anew. I'm sort of starting a new branch in the history of the database. And if there had been things, let's say subsequent to uh, this particular reset SCN up here, I think this is probably one of the um, well, probably this one corresponds to uh, the 7 July one probably corresponds to what I showed you in the cold backup and recovery video. Uh, there were presumably some changes made after this particular system change number, but the database kind of got to a new reincarnation set, if you will, at a, at a totally different uh, branch of, of its history. So I think that was probably a poor explanation. The basic gist here is an incarnation is kind of like a continuous sequence of events and then those get broken up or bounded by things like recovery operations. And when we do the point in time recovery we're going to show you in this video, it is going to create a new database incarnation. It's basically going to say, hey, I've got this kind of break in the continuity of the log history, I'm doing something funky, I'm replacing some files, and then I'm sort of changing the direction in which the database path went, the history of it, if you will, and I'm kind of creating this new branch. If you look at the readings that I gave you guys for this week, there's a, a semi-decent uh, uh, diagram in here that depicts sort of the, the notion of a database incarnation. See, some things are going along. This is incarnation one starting from the first system change number when the database was first used. And then we see at a certain point, uh, things progressed past SCN 1000 all the way up to system change number 2000. but at point in time recovery, something happened here to kind of create a new incarnation from system change number 1000. And that went along for a while, and then you see branching off of that was a totally separate incarnations, a separate incarnation, and each of these incarnations corresponds roughly to what you're seeing on the lines in this particular output here. So we're going to come back to our man in a little bit and run some operations through it, but it's a useful tool for being able to see the incarnations, and at the end of this process I'm going to run list incarnation through our man again, and you're going to see that we have a new incarnation that started today because of the point in time recovery operation we're about to perform. Okay, so we'll head back to the slides. We have already verified, I believe, that we're in archive log mode. Yes, we've done that. So I want to create a table. Well, let me do this first. Before anything else, I want to make sure I have a good, solid backup of the database. I'm going to go and take that backup. Uh, in the video, I'm probably going to speed up what you're about to see here because it's going to take a while to do. So I will, uh, you might, we might go into hyperspeed mode from the video here. And it's just me showing you this, this stuff happening faster so that the video takes a little bit less time. I'm going to select backup database. And rman, again, these are all rman commands. It's going to go in and do its thing. Starting the backup set, etc. I'm probably going to, I'll be quiet for a while just so I can, I can accelerate this part of the video clip and then we'll pick up after this uh, backup process is done. Remember this is a hot backup, the database is in archive log mode, users potentially could access it at this moment. Okay, so now I have a good solid backup of the database, I'm going to start doing some things. Uh, because I have archive log mode enabled, 
anything I do from now, I'm just definitely going to be captured in the logs and, and archived and available for recovery operations as needed. So I'm going to create a table. I'm going to add a row to it. I'm creating a table called PITR test intended to reflect point in time recovery test. Uh, I just make it a dummy column as you can see. I call that the primary key, but it doesn't really matter too much. I'm throwing in the user's table space. Throw that guy in there. And let me stuff a, well, I'm going to set auto commit on. If you guys will recall, auto commit basically means I won't have to type commit after every single operation I make. The database is going to commit it automatically. I'm going to go in, and I'm just going to stuff some value in the PITR test table just so we have some data to play with. Oh, this guy. Go away. Okay, one row is created and it is committed. Now, what I want to do here is I want to look at the state of the database right now. Or I should say, I want to know how to reference the state of the database as it currently exists. So I'm going to run this command it goes off the so-called v dollar database dynamic view and ooh, I missed some, oh, I got two T's in there little typo in the slides, good to know there we go, okay, so the formatting came out a little bit wonky you know, I have to set up column widths and SQL plus and such to make this look pretty and I'm not going to bother to do that, but you can see I've selected the current SCN current system change number which is 901348 and the system timestamp. And this is, you know, you guys can see the format of when I happen to be producing this video. So those two things I can use to basically reference this point in time and the database as it exists right now. Regardless of what else I do to the PITR test table, if I at some point say, I'm going to do a point in time recovery to this specific moment, you know, system change number 901348, or the timestamp that you can see on your screen there, then the database is going to look just, or I should say the contents of this PITR test table are going to look just like they do now. I'll end up with something like this. Okay, We'll put in a couple more records just for having some uh, points of reference to play around with. Got another commit. We're going to check out the current SCN and system in sys timestamp right now. Boom, I get a new one. You can see before the current SCN was nine, well now it's nine zero one three seven eight. Previously it was nine zero one three four eight. Uh, they, they won't exactly increment in a totally predictable fashion. It's not like you'd expect it to go up by one each time. The notion of a counter is a little bit strained and there, there are some things that could be happening in the background that Oracle's doing. Uh, or potentially other users in the database could be doing uh, that would actually impact that, that SCN. But here's a good way just for our, our loose purposes to reference what the database looks like right now. We've inserted that next value B into PITR test and a good way to name the current state of the database is to use either of these values here. Let's do it one more time. I'm going to put one last record in here and I'll run this guy. And once again, we'll just make sure we have the SCN and sys timestamp associated with that change. So what I'm going to do here is just describe the dollar database so you can see some of the contents in it. Cool. And it's pretty big. You see lots of uh, crazy configuration settings, and we certainly won't go all, over all of these, but you can see uh, an identifier, various things. You see the log mode is, is in here, and that's something we've selected from this particular table before see all kinds of information about the control file, etc. And somewhere in here, I don't know if I'll be able to find it, there, there's current SCN. And uh, sys timestamp is not from V$ database, it's just something you could select at any given point. It gives the, the current system timestamp. So current SCN is the only number I'm actually taking out of this V$ database view. Okay.